Hey there, it's Ching Tai, and I know it's been a minute, like a very long minute. I know it's been long, and I thought what better way to come back to my two video YouTube channel, like I know you've missed me, don't, don't say more, than to reflect on what I consider to be the most transformative year in my in my life. Today is December 31st, 2022, hours before the new year. And normally I write down in a very melodramatic way in my journal what I learned that year and you know give the year an introspective look. Since nobody's going to see this, I thought, you know, let's combine this with a video and you know the clips that I'm referring to when I write this reflection and post it on the internet because you know why wouldn't anyone want to post their most vulnerable thoughts on the internet? And the only reason why I'm doing that is because I know nobody's gonna see this. This will be a video of reflecting in a stream of consciousness rather than a complete narrative because wow, 2022 is a year that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Right now, I'm not sure if I'll look back at this year with fondness or with bitterness. I do, however, know that this year I've grown the most in so many aspects. Up until that point, university had depressed the shite out of me because I wasn't really carpe dieming the way I thought I would be. I had this idea of a university in my head built up for so long only for university to flop so hard and, you know, I let, I let it happen to me, honestly. Like, I, I was just kind of moving through the motions and this all changed when after 10 days of not sleeping and pulling all-nighters and fighting, fighting for my life to finish these courseworks, I decided that I couldn't live like that anymore. I couldn't just let life happen to me because that moment I had been waiting for was once that incomprehensible future and I needed to take life by its neck and start you know, choking it. Dude, he's hey. like, oh. But you know, once I had that idea, I started to put nail polish on and I like kept it. I started putting jewelry, makeup, because you know, like why wouldn't you want to make yourself look better when you can? Out. And I started wearing baggier clothing, went to countless exhibitions to make me feel that I was cultured. I bought books and mastered the art of drilling holes at the workshop. I built a goddamn pavilion that didn't stand, but it did look, look really cool that. under the lights. I, le I learned to laser cut and operate as CNC machines and breathed in so many dangerous fumes. I had lunch by the canal and gossiped. I went to parks and sat under a tree to read until ants bit my ass. I rode a boat by myself in Oxford and pretended to read, but couldn't because I just didn't know how to row a boat. I felt the spring breeze as I laid in the grass. I presented my architecture crit looking like Freddy from Scooby Dooby Doo. I went clubbing and finally got the password to heaven so that I'll never lose anyone again. I became friends with an elderly couple on a plane ride where they told me stories about their jobs at a mental asylum. I traveled to an island in Portugal where Estelle and I hiked above the clouds only to get lost and be trapped by dangerous cows. They weren't. I bartended for a week straight for drunk English people screaming at horses and I loved it. I bartended again for less drunk people singing St. Elton John and the Rolling Stones. I went to France for the first time and drank tinto while playing cards until the neighbors started screaming at us because it was 3 a.m. I watched the Budapest fireworks alone and soaked in the ooze and ahs around me. I started going to the gym to change those what I consider to be the toyiest arms of all time. I started my second year of university and wondered how I even got through the first. I tried brownies in Amsterdam and basically got hypothermia, but more importantly, the brownies didn't hit. I saw the Eiffel Tower for the first time, watched it shimmer, and cried. 
But man, this year was so packed. And I couldn't be more grateful for the amazing people around me and my parents for supporting me so unconditionally. But amidst of all the fun and happiness I longed for for so long in the path to prioritizing my personal growth, I was going through the most difficult period of my life. Okay. Endless breakdowns and pages filled with words. No. I had never felt no. so helpless and alone. This, is... this year, I turned 20, which was so immensely monumental for me, just because of what the number represented. I was no longer a teen. And the one thing about maturing that I have grown to absolutely despise is the feeling that everyone around you is aging. Even the people you don't want to see age. Living away from family, I kind of expect time to freeze everywhere else and come back to exactly how I left it. But that's just not the case. There's a certain heaviness that stops me from looking up and daydreaming. But to think about it positively, I became so much more in touch with my thoughts and emotions it makes me slightly upset that it took something so traumatic to wake me up, but I'm grateful it did. If anything, it reinforced me that kindness and empathy are the most essential traits that we can exhibit because sometimes we tend to forget that it's also everyone else's first attempt at life. 2022 means a lot to me because of all the pain and simultaneous happiness that occurred. The more complex life becomes, the easier it becomes to cherish the simple things. It's been the year where I fully developed my own identity, confronted my insecurities, dreams, and fears, and even grown so much stronger physically and mentally. I've never been more clear on who I am as a person. I love making stupid jokes and making people laugh. I seem like an extrovert, but I'm actually such an awkward introvert. I'm terrible at time management. I make playlists for my friends when they're sad. I speak like an actual bad girl. I overthink everything. I am extremely loud at times and extremely quiet at others. I strive to make others feel safe. I only wear clothes that are blue. I can't do a British accent to save my life. I love having tea and vibing to music at 2 a.m. with my friends. I am the worst at texting. I love my family and my friends. I am unclear about what I want to do with the rest of my life, but that's okay. I have the most horrendous posture ever, and I fear I'll one day wake up permanently twisted. I wander around museums for hours and never get bored. I value kindness and empathy. I don't like cats because they don't like me. I love Taylor Swift and there is nothing that's going to change that. I love to document my life and I obsess over capturing moments to become memories. Because honestly, YOLO is such a thing. That's why I've been vlogging almost every day over the past year. I want to immortalize these moments and be able to watch videos from the past and remember how I was feeling, what I was thinking, and what I like to wear. I'll call them time capsules. Not T-I-M-E, but T-A-I-M-E, since my name is Ching Tai, time capsule, Ching time capsules. <laughs> I know, amazing, right? Anyways, people change, thoughts change, and so I never want to sanitize and disregard any thoughts that I've recorded from the past because that's the fun of it. That's that's what makes it so exciting. And you know, maybe I'll get canceled, but <laughs> it's all a part of my journey. And so I can't wait to see what's to come. That was my 2022. And for 2023, I just want to continue what I'm doing now. Experiencing life in every aspect, the good, the bad, the unknown. And with that, I want to wish you a very happy new year. And I hope that this year brings you happiness and success in whatever way you define those words. But more importantly, to take care of yourself physically and mentally and cherish the ones around you. I hope you know that I'm normally not this melodramatic and I'll 
see you next time in the first installment of the time capsules. Bye. <laughs>